Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 28 of Foul Play. That's Fantasy Overwatch League Play. I am Deathblow, joined, as always, by A. Smith and Blevins. How are you guys doing? The Blevins, my apologies. How are you guys doing today? Good, man. So good. My team is into the Sweet 16, yo. Been watching some college basketball. I know. I know. I know. You be lost, so I don't care. Talk about video games. You be lost, and all the Knicks fans in the world are very upset that Zion Williamson has to risk uh, breaking an ankle in yet another round of play. (laughs) I don't know who Zion Williamson (laughs) is, and I don't care. Okay. Uh, You need to watch him, dude. He's amazing. He's yeah, the he's next a, LeBron he's, James. He's a generation. Who's too. LeBron James? Okay, so I it's a get out of here. <laughs> get out I will of here. delete everything this show has ever done. <laughs> Well, guys, if you haven't noticed, it's a bye week this week, so we're going to be quickly recapping stage one and getting into some very serious nonsense this week. We're going to be trying something a little different, uh, something that has very, very little to do with Overwatch League, so we hope you guys receive it well. We're excited to do it. We think it's going to be a really good time. We are going to be fantasy drafting the best video game franchises of all time. Um, so it's going to be a snake style draft. We've got three of us. We're not a hundred percent sure on how many rounds we're going to do because I think different topics that you can draft like this can go on for different lengths of time. And also episodes can go on for different lengths of time. So if we're moving (laughs) through it pretty quick, we're going to go deeper and deeper into the rounds just for fun here. Um, but stick with us i really hope you guys enjoy it we should be doing a lot of yelling a lot of screaming um we've done research a lot of trash talk i've got i've got notes on video game franchises here we've we've prepared for this um so hopefully you guys enjoy it as much as i'm sure we're going to enjoy doing it so thank you guys for tuning in if you are new to the show, not been here before, please follow us on Twitter at HNP underscore foul play. Uh, you can follow the main podcast Twitter as well. That's at high noon podcast on Twitter as well. Uh, we're hoping to do more of these. There's, there's more, more bye weeks. There's no games next mm-hmm. week to talk about. We've got some preview to do things like that, but who knows when we're going to be able to get these in. It'll depend a lot on the feedback and things like that. So please do weigh in on what you thought of the draft today. But before we do that, we did take the week off last week, so our apologies for that. We wanted to take a little bit of a break since the playoffs were not fantasy relevant. And we need to playoffs. Uh, We need to catch you guys up. Playoffs on exactly how we're doing in our uh, expert leagues. So I've got everybody's records here. A Smith, why don't you start us off? Tell us how you're doing in Podcaster Showdown and the Foul Play Expert League. All right, I am three and two in actually both leagues. Uh, I was going three and one into both, and last week, golly man, if it wasn't for me stacking up on all those for, uh, Paris Eternal players, and then man, did they do nothing! And boy, did uh, the uh, Washington Justice players kick my butt. So that was fun. Well, I think you won in the podcaster showdown last week. I'm fairly I'm fairly certain it was against me, and I was throwing because I was still undefeated. Uh, I'm fairly certain. I know I lost, I know. and I, I lost thought you were my opponent. Might uh, have been my opponent. Quite possible. Uh, yeah, could, could have been. For whatever reason, I thought it was you because I remember thinking you were uh, lucky and I didn't want to scoop to you, but I also didn't want to upset my roster when I was undefeated at the moment. So, uh, Blevins, how are you stacking up in the expert leagues? Yeah, got my first loss this week um, in – Podcaster showed and also got a loss in foul play as well. Um, to be completely honest, I just didn't change my rosters at all for the weird week. Uh, not because I wasn't thinking about it. I just literally forgot to do it until like it was a little bit too late. And I'm like, you know what? I don't really want to do anything drastic. Here's the thing. Um, my roster, I have a decent core of players. And then I've got a couple. I've got like one or two like variable spots. And I have another one or two spots that are like, I'm saving these players. Um, like I've had striker in at least one of my leagues, if not both of them, I've just been, I've just been holding him since the beginning um, and hoping that it's going to pay off. Now um, the problem with this weird week is that like with the, with the like two extra spots, I have like the flexibility to be like, Oh, these play, they're only playing once this week or um, they're off this week. I can use these two spots to drop players and then bring in new ones. The problem was there's too much of that core roster didn't have enough players playing. So it'd have to get rid of, like either 
my uh, investment players or core players. So it's just like I, I wasn't too worried about not even updating it. And it didn't pay off, so but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I went I went the tactical throwing route as well. Um, I was very much so at like the top of the standings for, for both leagues going into the week. Um, I, I'm 4-1 and one now in both leagues. Uh, I did get a win uh, versus Thawne in the foul play league where I did already have a loss. We both had three zeros, so neither of us were able to really do too much to, <laughs> to get full complete rosters. But the only roster move I made in either of the leagues was to pick up Ado in that league and throw him in, and he was like one of the top performers of the week. It was, it was kind of crazy how good he did um single-handedly basically won me won me that matchup so snuck a win in there Thon's having a bit of a rough go there but 8-0 for MVP and yeah looking forward to stage two uh I think that's the right after having done it if I'm still like top of the standings going into the next ones I'm not going to do anything crazy uh to my rosters but obviously I have other leagues where I'm not at the top of the standings and I did get a little crazy there so I'm still kind of experimenting with it a little bit but it was definitely interesting really difficult and terrifying so um start preparing for those weeks now uh the one thing I want to say the one bit of advice I'm going to give you guys Dallas and Houston both play twice in the road game which is I think week four don't quote me on that Uh, but they're the two teams that have a you know, two games in the the short week. So if you see any of the DPS players for those teams, even if you don't think they're going to start, uh, they're worth a speculative ad now because of what their value will be if they should happen to start, if something crazy happens, some weird, you know, so I, maybe not Arhan, but like Jake, Linkser, Dante, all of them should be owned in all leagues. Um, and the same goes for Dallas. I, I, you need Zachary, you need AKM, you need Effect, you need Ty would even own Taimu as well. You never know how things are going to shake out. And we now know exactly how valuable those guys are in those moments. So I think you should be scooping them up now while you can. Um, before anybody else is. They might be very good for you throughout the entire stage anyways, except week one, because they both have bye weeks in week one. But moving in, the one thing we are going to do to look back a little bit at stage one, it's not going to be just completely nonsense this time around. We're going to talk about some leaders. Oh, come on. <laughs> We're going to talk come about some about leaders it. from the first stage. This was an exercise that I thought was really helpful that we did last year, so I wanted to make sure we kept it, uh, where you take a break, you look at the stage, how it panned out, and who the top performers were. Uh, there's some surprise names at surprising spots in all three of these lists. Um, so keep an eye out for these guys in trades. Maybe they're a little, you know, their value is not quite caught up uh, with their perceived value or other way around. Their perceived value hasn't caught, uh, caught quite up, quite caught up with their actual value. So let's start things off with the supports. Why don't we each take one of these lists? So A. Smith, start us off with the supports. Just give us all of them here. Okay. Uh First, in uh, we'll kick it off with the best uh, guys. Number one overall in best, number one overall in raw. That's Iziaki, 222.91 in best and 339.96 in raw. Um, next is oh, Shaft. Hold on before that, what are, what exactly are these numbers that you're reading right now? These is, are uh, good call. These are average points yeah. per week um, for them. This isn't per map. This is the average of what they were able to output on the week. Um, st- available on the Premier Stats page uh, on highnoon.gg. Uh, if you're a, I believe you just have to be a patron, patron. Uh, in order yep. to get access to it. So if you want to support them, you can get some some extra stat information. Uh, really helpful. I yeah, recommend and, you guys do it. Besides. And besides listening to this podcast, there is no better way to have a tactical advantage over your uh, pleb friends than to go to highnoon.gg and become a patron. Get the awesome stats page. All those all those awesome infographics and stats that we uh, that Deathlow posts and A Smith posts. It's from them. Hundred percent. Not not a sponsor, but we just love. Yeah. Hashtag not an ad. Actually, (laughs) not sell out, but hundred percent sell out. No, but they're they're actually yeah. not a sponsor, but they're really great guys. They've you know kind of worked. We've worked with them um, a little bit to you know really kind of shape what it's become, and it's it's a really great product. And like I said, we're not sponsored by them or anything, but it's a great product, and you should check it out. It's true. Soul Drink is a good guy, mm-hmm. just a real good guy. All right, uh, we're going to talk about the second overall sport. Uh, first one was Iziaki. Second one is Shaz putting up 206.64 uh, in best and 
332.57 in raw. Shaz single-handedly has won me several games. So thank you very much. Uh, third is Violet, um, putting up 203.28 in best and 323.43 in raw. And the reason Sleepy is not in here is they had to play 60% or more. So that is a key key fact here because Sleepy does have also have also higher kept Neko yeah. out as well, I believe. Yeah, it did. Aid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Echo was a very good performer, though. Echo slotted in, I believe, into the four spot. Um, So he was, like, right there with Aim God. Uh, Spoilers, sorry. Um, But, yeah, so there's other names here. There's, you know, we're going to try to give them to you. I think support was the one that was the most affected by that particular caveat. Uh, Correct, yeah. I don't think any of the other ones were really super harmed. No. Um, uh, In fourth, as Deathblow alluded to, was Aim God, uh, 198.58, and that is fourth best uh in best but hey he put 267.07 and that is sixth best in raw so maybe his combined scores are not quite as aiming up as everybody else okay. see, the, see the fun there aim aim yeah all right maybe not all right hey, in, uh, yeah. Ooh, there. sorry my dad jokes are already kicking in uh it's true you're you're growing that you're growing that uh that that node in your brain developing quickly it's getting there man all right and, hey in fifth place somebody who we expected to be in first but you know what uh they're just winning too good and that is jonak uh, 195.61 yeah. and 274.40 that's fifth in both categories you could almost call that a feeder it for, eh, i mean it's close i mean it's certainly you're certainly not getting completely burned by that but considering that he is number one overall like if lebron ends up being like a good like top five player is everyone happy about that probably so say, still you probably still yeah. so we're saying if like lebron turned out to be like carmelo it would it would right. still be okay because i mean he's like to be honest he's still a first round draft like sure like he's still mm-hmm. kicking most people's butts so um I mean, he's. I, I would still pick him. You know, he's what top eight performer. Yeah, you're not getting burned. Or, yeah, he's top. Yeah, top top eight performer. So, or s- s- top six. Yeah. So, yeah, almost feeder, not quite. Almost, yeah. But I mean, to be honest, like these actually panned out pretty much exactly how everybody thought. Um, Jonak should have been up top, but we all had Izaki Shaz. Um, a lot of people had Violet up there. Um, Aim God might be the little bit of the surprise because. We all thought Boston was going to be terrible, and hey, they made the playoffs. So they're not as nearly as bad as everybody thought. Um, and Neko honestly didn't play enough. And I, don't, I mean, I don't know. I, I think the only one that's not in there that I was expecting to be in there was Bedozen. Um, mm. But hey, London kind of sucked this meta. So um, look look for Bedozen to rebound next meta. I thought the big story here with supports was that the, the risky ones really paid off for you. Right, like your Iziakis and your Violets. That we, we, I mean, we liked their situation. We thought they would be really good, um, but we didn't have a track record of it. So there was inherent risk involved with picking them, um, and they both showed exceptionally well. And and really, it paid off to have um, faith there. Uh, and I think we were all kind of helped by the fact that it was very apparent that you were just going to want to scoop up any Zenyatta that looked like they were a starter because uh, their inherent value. But Iziaki and Violet especially really, really showed up. Um, and- Let's not forget the fact that Iziaki was the number one overall support for a team that didn't win a single game. Iziaki carries that team. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Brave, but he carries them. Most of that roster is on these lists. It's really weird, but we might talk about that in a little bit. Yeah, my brain, it doesn't even, my brain doesn't even comprehend this. (laughs) But let's move. It's like stupid give up. Let's move into the the DPS here. I'll take this one, Blevins. You can round us out with tanks afterwards. Um, but the top of the list here is Ivy of the Toronto Defiant. He had 199.75 per week in the best game format, and his raw average was 300.81. That was good for second. Um, just 
Toronto showed up. They played really, really well across the board this stage. Uh, they were competitive just about every time, and it re really showed up in fantasy. Um, Ivy was a, a rock star, basically, this entire stage for fantasy purposes. Um, and a very late draft pick. So he's got like that league winner potential, uh, I think, mm -hmm. if, if Toronto can keep it up, and if he in particular can keep it up. Um, also, Sinatra comes in here at number two. 184.77 was his average best game uh, in his his average raw score here was 305.36. The raw score was actually the best uh, among all DPS players. Just one of the best Zarya players in Overwatch League, and it showed in stats. He, he had the damage numbers, um, so good on him there. Randomly, we've got a Brigitte player on the worst team in the league. We've got Agility is coming in at 183.58, good for third. And we've got uh, his raw is 280.76, also third place. I don't really know how this happened. I just know I own Agility is in a couple spots, so I'm pretty happy about it. Um, this one is perplexing to me. Not ownable. I, I would have to. Yeah, just ridiculous <laughs> that you would even consider benching him. Uh, owning him on your bench, just, just insane. Um <laughs> But now yeah. you know why I picked him. One so, <laughs> one, <laughs> one, one B pick. Uh, you're one not B. getting away with that in our draft later, A. Smith. I'm telling you right now. Oh, there's no one Bs. No, no. I, this is off platform. I'm commissioning. Are you no sure? Are you sure? Not unless, not unless I get the first pick. That's the only way that would fly. Um, mm. But moving soul drink to fix the draft. Moving, moving along. We've got. The partner in crime for agility is Kareev with 174.3, good for fourth in the best format on average, that is, and 269.85 average in raw. Again, good for fourth. This makes a little more sense. He's the Zarya player. Their matches were close. They were losing all of them, but they were close. They were competitive. I didn't, there was not many blowouts or anything like that. So I get the Zarya player being up here. I don't think Kareev's a great Zarya, so maybe that's a little perplexing. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to really make of the LA uh, LA Valiant being so prominent in these leader lists other than I might try to trade him away. I don't know. We'll, we'll get to that after we get to the end of the list. Uh, mm -hmm. I do want to have a quick conversation about that now that we're really noticing all, all these all these guys being here. Mm -hmm. And the last one is another one of the best just graviton wasters in the world. Uh, Nene, watch, watch me whiff. whiff. Watch me, Nene. 173.59 average best score and a 253.43 average raw score. Um, no points lost for whiffing gravitons, and the playoffs don't count anyways, sure. so makes sure. complete sense that Nene's here. He was, in fact, one of the best Zarya players of the stage. Blevins, take it away with our tank players. Yes. Starting off, we've got Envy... At 169.08 uh, and 252.07 for combined. Next up, we got Void, 158.34 and 248.41. Rounding out at third, we've got one uh, Space with 153.98 and 236.27. In fourth, we've got Michelle, 143.71, 189.3. And we've got note of the Boston Uprising, 142.42 and 193.07 for combined. Again, more uh, Toronto Fiant players, more LA Valiant players. And the, f no, not the first instance of a Boston Uprising player. We had Aim God as well. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, I, I don't, I didn't really notice it until now, but. Why in the world are these LA Valiant players on these lists? We didn't see this happen for Florida last year when they were losing and also had guaranteed playtime because they literally didn't have subs. We weren't seeing these Florida players. There was no Florida players in these types of lists last year, or if there were, they were few and far between. We didn't see this with Shanghai, who didn't win games. We didn't see this with, you know, early LA Gladiators players that weren't winning games. We didn't see this with early San Francisco Shock players that weren't winning games. What in the world is different about these LA Valiants where they didn't win a single game and consistently they're getting in the top spots? I have no well, idea. It is a totally different system, to be fair. Like, True. like we is. are having different, like, the, the fantasy points are acclimated different or, or accumulated differently. But Valiant hasn't gotten stomped, but, like, one or two matches so like most of theirs are going to five or mm. or competitive like like they look good and still really bad at the same time it doesn't mm. 
quite make sense to me, mm -hmm. but like they have the potential, and I think it's partially their style of play that really helps them. Um, I, I, that that would be my best guess because honestly, I was looking at it, and Fate is actually the top Reinhardt player on this list. So, it, which is which still blows my mind. Fate almost snuck into the top five as a Reinhardt. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about a team that had three ga three map fives this stage, so obviously we know that helps. Um, also, I think the difference between the LA Valiant and the teams that you mentioned, Blevins, is there's a level of mechanical skill that's present on this roster that doesn't didn't <laughs> exist on those other rosters. Maybe still doesn't Florida, um, but especially not in the roster they chose to field in stage one. Uh, we need Sia player, please. Bare hands, fix this. Uh, we need you. Okay, but. Uh, yeah, I think they're this. The LA Valiant aren't an 0 7 team, right? They're a team that uh, has the talent to be mid one of the mid table teams, just like all the rest of them. I thought they were their strategy, their communication, and their coaching was. I mean, when you're looking at numbers like this, it's it's hard not to to view it that way. Was the problem, right? I think they made the correct decision in moving on from their coach. Um, whether or not he could have coached well in a different meta or not, you can't have a head coach around that coaches you to 0 and 7 stages just because he's not big on tank play. That's just not okay, right? Um, so I, I think there's a, a couple of factors that really helped elevate things. Um, map fives are, are probably just the biggest one. I don't know that anybody else went to, to that many. Um, but sure. so, yeah, I, again, it's just a combination of a bunch of factors. To me, the most interesting question about this is not Iziaki. Everybody knows how good he's doing. Everybody knows how big, how good space is. And honestly, I think a lot of people are higher on space than should be on, you know what I mean? The, where, the, where they should mm -hmm. evaluate him, though he is very, very good. One of the best. There's people that think he's like best in the world, and I'm I'm not there on space yet. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm very, very much so wondering about Kareev and Agilities and and how you guys want to react to this mm -hmm. as fantasy owners. I own Agilities. Should I be trying to trade him away? And, and capitalize on the fact that he's number three on the list right now. Um, should I be trying to acquire Kareev from somebody else? That, side of, uh, that sort of thing. Blevins, what's your attitude on the DPS players for the Valiant as we move into a DPS meta? I think sell, sell, sell. They're, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see them getting any higher than this, right? Like, if you can get solid, proven players in DPS meta, I'm gladly taking them because I think... They might be similarly. I don't think they're ever getting better. I think there's no way that we see agilities. I would. I wouldn't even think that we're going to see agilities in the top three come this time next stage. I wouldn't think so. And Kareev, as well. Um, I think in terms of raw DPS play, they're not in this top, you know, top four, top five situation. I wouldn't think so. Um, so with that being said, if you can get a different top four or even like a player that is potentially going to be a top five a different top five player i'm i'm all about swapping these guys out even if you just swap at parity level where they are right now i think that's a big gain for you if you can trade agilities for any one of the other top five players i think you're good uh with the exception of maybe nene because we go back to the point where we don't know what nyxl runs for this mm -hmm. for this meta yeah, it could be totally different. Um, but like, you know, if you can get if you can ship your agilities for another solid DPS player that is guaranteed playtime and has shown that they, you know, are good in a DPS meta, I would take that I'd take that all day. I think. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I'm more inclined to want to sell these guys uh, now while I can because I don't think if I can if I can trade agilities away as the like valued at the number three overall DPS player the odds of that being a bad deal at any point in the season are very, very low. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, that's a very easy sell high scenario for me to buy mm -hmm. into Kareev, especially is transitioning to this role. I think he's more likely to be very volatile. Um, mm -hmm. That said, there's, there's upside for these guys, right? Like they're doing sure. this while they're bad. They might be able to get better. Um, and, and, so if you're able to buy low on them, right? If people don't know, because there's going to be people that aren't caught up on this. So we're saying right. sell, but test the waters, right? If you don't own these guys, there's a, a disproportionate um, valuation of, of what they bring to the table. Maybe you can get a Kareev for very little because somebody's only, mm -hmm. you know, surface level following the league, not deep diving right. these numbers. Um, I also think there's a good opportunity if you're not able to get, you know, that, 
maybe like Stellar, for example, Stellar for one of these guys, mm-hmm. like a little lower, but probably a better position More going forward, if, right? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe you can also get yourself a tank player or something because tanks perform mm-hmm. so poorly, people are going to think I can go get them. Well, what about next meta? Are they still going to are they still going to score poorly? We don't know for sure. We know divas are get more valuable, tank. so yeah, mm-hmm. could try to maybe two for one it if you can't get somebody that's like top three, to, you know, top five at their position for one of these guys. Still look for that opportunity to move them, um, but. Like I said, don't be afraid to look at them and and try to acquire them as well, uh, because it, just because you don't want them at the value they currently hold for the people that are plugged in, looking at these numbers, like to access these numbers, you need to be a patron of the, of the platform. So not everybody's got that, right? And not everybody but listens everyone to the show. That. If they become a high a high new guy, GG patron, <laughs> or just patron. or just listen or to just follow play every week because yeah. we're gonna tell you, um, yeah. and and you know maybe after you execute the trade, then plug them into the podcast so that you know the the guy that's competing for the the championship for you doesn't uh, get to take him for a ride in a trade too or something like that. So um, keep an eye out for that. This is the kind of thing we always want to be doing. Another one here is Michelle's. Another one that I think creates an interesting opportunity, um, and then uh, Void might be a little under the radar. Uh, as well, uh, though he he did perform well. I think the, the gladiators were kind of lackluster as a whole this stage, not quite what people thought they were getting, so you might have an opportunity to make a run at Void, too. All right, yeah. so gentlemen, I think it's time. I think Is we it? can push ourselves towards the draft here yes. um do we just want to bring up anything to delay Blevins just because I know he's excited and I want to tilt him early on in the process? No, always okay. tilt. All right, so we've got uh, we've got about yeah, don't worry about time. We'll we'll figure that out as we go. But like I said, an indetermined number of rounds. We'll kind of play it by ear as we go. Uh, Blevins is lying about the draft order on the draft board. So we'll I fix put it in that. the placeholder. It says it right on the thing. Right, no, it doesn't. I deleted that. Okay, so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna move here. right in here. And again, guys, we this are drafting. Right. Oh, should we? We got to do something. I'll get a better sound effect for it, but. I'm excited, so let's get some trumpets going for this draft um, to get us kind of hyped up and ready to go. Again, this is the greatest video game franchises of all time. This is, We're not drafting our favorites. We're not drafting... You can. What, you can, you can draft whatever you want, but the, the goal here is to Splatoon. pick <coughs> the greatest video game franchises I'm be of so all mad time. I'm going to Splatoon. <laughs> you're not going to be an inkling main by the end of this draft if I have anything to say about it but um, like I, it's going to be a lot of fun um, there's going to be hate drafting there's going to be anger there should be smack yelling talk. smack talk all these things uh, A. Smith's a wild card we me and Blevins go they back a while a, a. Smith's oh. a little newer um, we don't know a ton about him outside of the Overwatch, uh, Overwatch arena so you're going to get to know us and we're going to get to know A. Smith along with you guys as we go through <laughs> these drafts and this draft in particular so we hope you guys enjoy it we're also going to be putting up a poll on the Twitter at HNP underscore foul play uh, check it out vote for whoever you think has the best draft um, and we will declare them the winner I'll uh, I don't know. I'll play the trumpets again for him next. I'll play the trumpets for yeah, me and, next week after I win. Uh, one, good luck. One, one thing I want to note here is that this is not. We didn't. Our the draft has not already been done, so no. we don't mm-hmm. know what each other is picking. This wasn't no. like oh, we're going to talk about what the yeah. draft was. Nope. This is brand fresh, new. We don't know what we're picking. This is all literally live as, as it's happening. And the draft order for this, like it is, it's a fantasy draft, so we're snaking, okay? So A. Smith is going to be picking first, and he's not getting two picks. Um, then Blevins will go, and then I will get two picks, as I will get the last pick of the first round, the first pick of the second round. The yeah. next time we do one of these drafts, everybody's going to slide over. It's going to be Blevins, me, A. Smith, no. and then the third it'll time. Be, no, no, no. It'll be the, you, the winner. A. Smith. Then oh, yeah, yeah. Going the other I, way. I, going the other I, way. I only think it should be fair if the winner gets to draft next so i get no. to draft first every round that's how this is, is, is i mean i think that's that's only fair i'm gonna get to draft first Shame every time we do this Shame get over. all nah, your get, out of here. get all your talking in now a smith before you punt and miss <laughs> the obvious 101 pick that everybody should take with this selection i'll pre-shame yep. bell you for blevins shame. go for it shame shame on that note of shame, pick. on that note of shame, let's the move first in. Round. A. Smith, you're on the clock. Go ahead and make your selection. All right. 
with pick one A. I am taking <laughs> I am taking the Mario franchise. Simple, okay. easy. They literally have changed the face of the planet. If you say Mario, everybody knows what you are talking about. You're not talking about some random dude named Mario. You're talking about the character. The guy has more games than pretty much any game combined. It's ridiculous how many games he's in. He's in movies. He's in everything. He's mm. literally shaped the culture. I have played Mario since I was a very young infant, and my child will play Mario because it's a rite of passage. Yeah, I mean, you have to have played Mario. You have to be an up. infant to like a Mario game, so I think that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> oh, um, get there. Yeah, there's a get reason there. that the format for Mario games has been the same for 30 years. It's because it's literally to uh, appeal to six and seven year olds because their brains aren't developed enough to do hard things. That's why you play Mario games. I get it. It's, it's you know fun. what? Have you played Bold Mario Party? Party? It's babies. Mario Don't Party Mario. is Mario awful. Mario Party. That is the worst Mario game that's ever been out. Mario Party. Party. Party is Mario. garbage. Simulator. Okay, They're... you can win every single mini game oh, in Mario Party, which good. I have done in a game. <laughs> I've won every single one. Still lose because why? My buddy rolls a five over and over and over again. Rolls through the thing, lands on a space. Oh, Toad comes out. Oh, it's a free star for you and another turn. Why? Sad. No reason. Because it's dice rolling. <laughs> yeah. If you want to play Mario Party, just go outside in the freezing cold and jump in a gutter and roll some dice and look at the dice rolls. Whoever rolls higher wins. There's your Mario Party. That's a garbage game. And because Mario Party's even in Mario, Mario's a trash game. <laughs> so you know what god i'm so mad about that. my 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 strategy work i tilted I'm him broken God i'm broken it. already I'm so we've gotten so one back into this and i am just broken as a human being god i'm so mad about that <laughs> bold uh, bold all, to pick awful. a game bold to pick a franchise carried by its its goofy funny counterpart in mario kart which is the only good game in the I franchise <laughs> That's I'm my yelling, argument, whether or not so it's loud Luigi's that, Mansion. I'm <laughs> yelling so loud that Maddie literally messaged me on Facebook and said, I disagree about Mario Party. So she's <laughs> yes! Wrong. Even your just, girlfriend is on my side. Just wrong. I'm gonna say. Um, <laughs> just wrong. Yeah, listen, if a game is so basic that your girlfriends can play it with you and it's the only video game they'll play, <laughs> that says everything I could ever say about Mario Party. <laughs> Um, How much money is Mario made? That's that's my money. argument whether or not okay. dollar bills. That's dollar, the argument. Dollar, okay, dollar hold bills. on, hold on. That's the money. Okay, Fortnite greatest Fortnite. Whoever picks Fortnite ends up winning this, boys. Tetris uh, isn't Tetris the winner by that by that metric, anyways. That but it was in, uh, in 1963. Uh, maybe Man. not money, but my copies sold. I think is is what it's got to recommend. Yeah, no, nope, nope, sure. Um, Mario, Mario, but I'm we're gonna right now, Mario. We're gonna move on. We're gonna move on. You have to listen to the moderator when he tries to move us. All right, fair, fair enough. <laughs> or the whole system's <laughs> broken. Sure. Uh, but yeah, so we're gonna go on Blevins. Regardless of yes. whether or not we thought that was the correct 101 or not, we did a got good it. job tearing it to shreds. So what do you got okay, to 102? So, wait, wait. So I get I get pick 1B, right? Shut up. Uh, <laughs> but okay, it's your what do you got? All right. So I needed to get this queued up because there are plenty of games, first-person shooters, that are great. We even have a, fr okay. a first-person shooter. I can feel it. That he's, we do a podcast he's punting. on. He's punting. But there is only one first-person shooter. Oh, he's shooter. punting so hard. No, there's only one first-person shooter. Oh, he's blowing that, it, guys. That lives above all else. That's GoldenEye for the uh, N64. Okay. There is no greater game than GoldenEye. Anyone who picks something else, Ooh. even any other first-person shooter should just immediately be disregarded, and that's Overwatch included. None of these would exist without GoldenEye. Yes, you can say Doom and uh, all those old uh, Wolfenstein, yeah, those games came first. Great, those games are garbage. They're they're barely even a first-person shooter. They have nostalgia factors. That's great. Gold Knight revolutionized it. There is no better class-based game. I don't care. There's only one different class. It's Odd Job, who's completely broken. But God it, love it's the Odd game Job. that people of a certain age played nonstop. And it revolutionized the way that first-person shooters were made, designed, and played. There is no better pick than GoldenEye in N64. Blevins, you heard the word franchises and on I the topic, right? The music you, you, franchise. you heard the word franchises. Yeah, James Bond. Oh, it's a, it's I a, sure did. It's I a sure one. Did. Congratulations. Game is. No, 
James Bond Nightfire. Amazing Nightfire. game. Nightfire. Yeah. Nightfire is an amazing game. Yeah, two hit wonder. Great. hundred percent of the games are great. That's fine. You've heard of you've heard of addition by subtraction, about, but have you ever have heard of subtraction by addition, being, folks? I don't have Blevins to worry is here to do about it. there being Mario Party games to ruin this. Why mess it up if there's perfection? When was the last time? You just Mario named Party the ones that ruin it. What do you mean you don't got to worry about? I didn't even know the Nightfire names of them. Is great. Garbage. That's your fault. Absolute Dude, garbage tier. An amazing game. If, if it's too to bad out. you don't get Perfect Dark, so that maybe you had more than one decent perfect. game from, in from the franchise. Russia with Love actually stepped in. Absolutely. Into. 007 you, sucks. That's Levin's, what from Russia with Love You windmill is. slammed the remember punch. Remember that one? Dark. You don't, you don't remember that Come one, do you? Because it was trash. It was absolutely dark. Get out of in all game. seriousness, Get Goldeneye. Out of in all seriousness, Goldeneye would have been a phenomenal pick if it was the fifth round. But it's not. It was the first. <laughs> Blevins no, punted. Uh, the the polls will show he it out. Did. Easy, he did. He uh, did. Get out of here. Easiest win ever. So you're taking 007, right? Is that where we're I'm at? I'm taking James Bond franchise. James Bond, okay. which includes 007 and Gold and uh, Nightfire. All right, well, I filled out the draft I mean, board for you, so I wrote 007. I'm going to come in with what the correct second pick should have been. Uh, this was a two, two-man two race. Um, no, this would have been uh, – I'm not going to say anything. This is – yes, the first pick. Great job, Blevins. Thank you for saving me from myself. Um, yeah, yeah, the yeah, Warcraft yeah. franchise. Listen, we're talking about okay. some of the greatest huh? games within their – genres we're talking about hearthstone we're talking about world of warcraft and we're also talking about the real-time strategy games um these were warcraft blazed the trail for things like starcraft that you like um also hearthstone revolutionized the strategy game the card game industry even if i don't necessarily like the way it went down you can't deny its mass popularity its mass appeal its appeal on twitch um and world of warcraft is hands down the greatest video game, single video game that was ever created. I've never spent more money in my entire Fortnite life on players. a video game. Nobody cares about Fortnite. Apex Legends has more players. Fork knife. If you talk to me about Fork knife one more time, you better have drafted it, Blevins. That game is trash. But uh, World of Warcraft, on the please other hand, I've never spent more money on a video game in my life, League and I've never felt like I've gotten a better value out of a video game in my entire life. Also, Warcraft is phenomenally better than StarCraft. Don't at me. Um, not even remotely close. StarCraft's a better game. It's criminal. You want to know how interesting Warcraft is? It's so interesting that I literally have never played it because it literally oh. couldn't draw me in. I'll yeah, because you don't own a PC. It. You're a console. I literally own a PC. I play. I'll one up you on okay, a la is it a laptop? Is. is it a laptop? I will it, one up you with how interesting. Fight me. <laughs> That's a yes. It. I did play it, and my old roommate can attest to this. I was playing it, and I literally fell asleep while playing. I was picking, playing, and I and not because James I was playing Bond. for so long, because I literally fell asleep while playing. Your pick is the only argument I need about your standards and your taste in video games. No one games. is going to hate the Golden Eye pick. That is an easy pick. It was it, a, a huge mm, waste. It would have mm, been there in three rounds. You, yeah, you you could have picked that in like. It's on my list. Nine. I had to cross it out because you took it, but you know it could have gone forever. Um, all right, so so here, far man. the first well, round goes Mario. James Bond, uh, and then we've got Warcraft. So I can't believe I'm saying this, but you're absolutely uh, crushing this draft compared to Blevins A. Smith. So good job you, so thank far. Thank you. Mario I figured I would. Pick. Get out of here with your Mario. <laughs> hey, Mario literally, it, you could say Mario to anybody in on the planet in any language, and they would catch it. Okay. You can say Fortnite, too. Stop bringing up Fortnite. Nobody cares. Nobody on the panel likes Fortnite. Nobody listens to this show likes Fortnite. I'm even helping you at this point. Save your poll results, Blevins. If every time you say Fortnite, you get 10% less votes. So you know what? Keep saying Fortnite. It will no longer matter what you actually pick. Okay. What's your second pick? My second pick here is one of the... Eat it, Blevins picks, okay? Oh, got it. You're going to pick the one I have. I'm absolutely going to pick it. I absolutely have to snap off Smash Brothers. It's 100% has to be uh, the pick here. The competitive scene of Smash Brothers is, like, transcendent in esports. The way they cling to the past is is admirable. The way <laughs> the way they they refuse to conform to what's new. I love the way they, they do that. The, the game hits on all cylinders. It gets your casual crowd. It gets your hyper-competitive crowd. 
Um, they finally released one that kind of brings everybody together into into one arena. Um, so I think maybe I would not have taken them here if it wasn't for Ultimate um, coming out when it did. So there's a little recency bias here, um, but. If you don't like Smash Brothers, you haven't played Smash Brothers. It, the nostalgia factor through and through across that game, the the time commitment, what you get out of it for your time commitment is there. I think everything that a competitive video gamer, which I am, um, wants in a video game, it's there. Smash Brothers has it. You're t I'm a guy that literally bought a Nintendo Switch, and I will never in my life buy another video game unless they make another Smash Brothers and put it on the Switch. I will never buy another game to play on that that. I bought an entire console strictly for this one game. Um, that says every. That's been the case. That's like why I had the GameCube and everything like that. I, I think s college nostalgia for me, the ability to to play it, everything like that, just with a group by yourself. Even like you can level up and, and improve just playing by yourself. Um, there's only one knock on the game. It's the online play, but the game is best um, played with friends. Fault. It's not the game's yeah, that's fault. not the game's fault, although they made the game, so I don't know. It's, it, it might be a little shared. Um, but yeah, I'm taking Smash Brothers. I think it has to be an early pick. Um, and yeah, that's going to go off the board. Any rebuttal? You, I, I have, you I want have to know who a main yeah, Smash Brothers brother, brother <laughs> player is? Uh, yeah, that's Mario. That's Mario, my pick. Thank you. He is one of the main characters, and half of his player, half of his fan people hey, Smith, are in the game. Before you talk You're anymore, welcome. go look at a tier list or something like that. Blevins. Uh, it doesn't matter if he's good. Doesn't matter if he's good. Blevins, uh, the You're main up character your in World of Light, the single player game in Smash Ultimate, is Kirby. So don't even have that on you. Um, yeah, I have nothing negative to say about Smash Bros. except for the fact that I knew that you would try to counter pick it, so I would debate you into picking it early because no one cares about Smash Bros. That's the problem; it has no Twitch viewership. So, I I, I agree. The poll, the poll. How much does how much Twitch how much viewership does Double O Seven have? Nightmare. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. check in. It doesn't matter. Check in. How many people are streaming Goldeneye right now? Can I, can chat? Can you help us out? How many are streaming oh, Goldeneye right now? Oh, I took Warcraft. I've got all the Twitch numbers I need with Hearthstone. Thank you very much. Blevins, round two. Who do you got? Smash Bros. Smash Bros. is a good pick. I, I I can't can't fault you for that. But I mean, so I didn't pick. I, I I thought this would be the the counter pick. So I'm I'm glad it didn't get picked. But if we're talking about world encompassing, we're talking about different game genres encompassed in one in one franchise here. There there. I mean, there can only be one. I mean, there's only one that has so many different games across decades, across television, <laughs> shows, across, RPG, across card games, across everything. That's Pokemon. There's no other game that started off, that created a Twitch culture with Twitch Plays Pokemon. Yes, it is the dumbest thing ever, but it started it all. Pokemon has invaded popular culture more so than Warcraft has. Warcraft has that stigma of, oh, it's the guy in his basement playing uh no no lifing warcraft because that was true for a lot of people there the it was but pokemon yeah, also like vin strange. diesel and like a lot of uh really anyways we don't need to talk about vin my diesel pick one. sucks <laughs> uh <laughs> vin diesel sucks and if you think vin diesel sucks uh vote for me because vin diesel sucks warcraft sucks uh pokemon transcends everything it's got I mean, and remember remember and here unlike mario which has a bunch of trash games associated remember pokemon snap Remember Pokemon Pinball? All these games, they might not be huge yeah. titles, but they were amazing games in and of themselves. Okay, Pokemon you probably never Snap. played them. <laughs> Says Pokemon, Pokemon Snap. Snap was an amazing game. It was. Oh, Blevins, get out of here with shut this. your camera off. Out. How uh, can you Pokemon look into out. the camera and oh, tell me Pokemon Snap was a good guy. game? Keep doing oh my it. god. Don't get me guy. wrong. He didn't know what he's talking Keep about. Keep talking <sighs> smack about Pokemon Snap. It was a great game. The Pokemon games are, the originals are amazing. Every iteration has been great. They've kept the same, the same. Uh, they've kept the same recipe over and over, and they keep adding. It's great every time. They've got fighting games. They've got card games. They've got everything you can imagine. They got a feature film starring Ryan Reynolds coming out. Go watch Detective Pikachu. It's oh coming gosh. out. Hashtag oh. ad. It's not an ad. Warcraft uh, had a feature film. Yeah, and uh, oh, you want to bring that movie up and talking about train wrecks and dumpster fires? Yeah, let's talk about the Warcraft feature film. Let's game, let's wait like, until Detective Pikachu actually airs before we awful. we okay. compare the two. You know what? what? Let's do this. We'll go with box office ratings. Just screw A Smith. You're out of this. It's just box office ratings. As Detective Pikachu comes out, if the box office ratings are better than what Warcraft was, I win. 
regardless of what the votes were. There, there it is. I agree to that. I'll take that bet all day. I'll take that, that bet every day. Nobody day. offered it. Nobody accepted it. But Levin's yeah, that ain't it. What I'll say, what I'll say yeah, is I did have Pokemon as the number two games on my screw you, I'm taking it, and you can't stop me, Blevins <laughs> list. I knew you would have it early. So if you didn't punt the first time around and you had taken the correct number two, you would have lost both of those picks. So... I guess you're, that was the best I can, best thing I can say about your round one pick, Blevins, is it enabled you to get yeah, Pokemon yeah, yeah. here. Yep. All right. Pokemon can make fun of itself. A Smith, you can go ahead with your round two pick, and then you've got round people, three as well. How many people have died playing Pokemon? Just, just, just true story. Like, is, is there, a, there's got to be a number there, right? I think Darwin Holy. says that that's not the game's fault. It's, it's, it's not, but man. That just shows I, the kind of people that play it. That's just, Whoa, we that's, got there. That's just an argument for right, right. Pokemon. If it's <laughs> yeah, 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 I don't know. I don't know, man. All right. All right. Oh, ooh. No pressure here. All right. With my number two pick, I'm going to take the best fighting game. I you already did. fighting game here. Mm, mm, mm. I'm going to take the game that transformed fighting games and brought blood and gore to the front. Yes, right. I'm taking Mortal Kombat, baby. Hey, hey, Mortal hey, Kombat. Oh, come on. Yes, we got there. We got there. Mortal stinking combat, man. That game. You know how many people have just played in arcades like nonstop Mortal Kombat? Mortal Kombat tournaments, Mortal Kombat is still going on right now it transformed the games as a whole like fighting games oh it just it uh mortal kombat is what brought fighting games to the forefront mortal kombat single-handedly changed the whole face and if you say mortal kombat you know all those moms are like oh my god my kid can't play that because it's so awesome and bloody and gory but people know what it is i might i might i just had my uh 12 year old 13 13 year old little sister here and you know what she wanted to play she wanted to play me in mortal kombat that's right mainly because my mom was not here so hey it was awesome i still love that game i still have it i'm probably gonna get mortal kombat 11 because golly those games were fun I... and yes they even have a story mode game that was awesome so every single form of it has just been phenomenal I do know the kind of people, to answer the, one of the first questions you asked after making the pick, I do know the kind of people that played Mortal Kombat. They're the same people that grew up to die while playing Pokemon Go. Um, listen, that was a game oh. so, so basic and so simple in its core that I played it with my dad and my sister. So I do love Mortal Kombat to an extent, but we're talking about greatest of all time. This isn't like fun playing it before my brain fully developed and I knew how to like develop strategies and, and, and play games. Um, yeah, I, I don't really have too much to say there. Mortal Kombat's well, a fine it, franchise, but it, it, to me, it's just not on Here's on the thing. I love Mortal Kombat, but I love Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, which is a great game. Mortal Kombat 2, great game. Mortal Kombat 1 was the end all be all. You might as well have stopped the franchise there because everything after that was complete trash. Yeah. The all of the 3D Mortal Kombat's absolute joke. The story go, mode game was fun. I, I think I agree with Blevins here. Like, you, unfortunately, you get the bad with the good, and Mortal here, Kombat didn't know when to get, didn't know when to quit. Here, here's the thing: I love Mortal Kombat as a franchise. I love Ed Boon. I love NetherRealm Studios, but they messed up. They do things so horrifically bad sometimes that it makes me feel bad. I what I don't want to. I don't want to spoil any future picks, but I will say. That in the 90s, when Mortal Kombat was at its top, it wasn't even the best fighting game that's out there. That's all I'll say. The original? Like Mortal Kombat 1? No, like Mortal in the Kombat. heyday. Mortal Kombat 2, Mortal Kombat 3, the arcade heyday. You, you want to know when Mortal Kombat peaked, mm. A Smith? Mm. The first time Toasty ever happened. Okay. Toasty. That was yeah, Toasty. That, 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 that was the that was the peak Mortal Kombat 2. That was the uh, peak of Mortal Kombat. And after that, it's been on a downward trajectory. But the fact that you can say Toasty and so many people know what it is, it's just it's part of culture. You're, you're, you're not wrong. Here's like, the problem. I'm, I'm picking games that are culture-based. Like they shaped the face of the culture we have today. 
Everybody will know what I'm it's, talking about. They are incredible you're not wrong about franchises. That. It's not. And it's not as bad as 007 was. That 007 game because if game. a franchise lasts game, as franchise, long as they game, do, franchise. if a franchise lasts right. as long as they are and still going on, you're gonna get crap games in there. It's gonna happen. You because you know what they're gonna really? keep making money off of it. It just happens. Because you picked Mario earlier, and I picked Warcraft. And apart from Mario Party being an absolute joke, I don't remember quite as many flops from either one of those universes. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Mm, there, there are definitely a couple uh, of uh, Super Mario uh, games. An okay pick, though. I don't. I don't think you're throwing the throwing the draft with Mortal Kombat. But um, and clearly, you needed to take it when you did because Blevins already had the music queued up. So I did. I literally had it queued up. All, I got there. All. Got all there. is it. So I, I'll give you credit for that. But A Smith, you are up again. So we might as we'll get into your next pick all right oh right what? you're up again oh yeah fill out like your brackets me? too by the way guys oh, okay um i got you this time okay all right with my third overall pick i am going to go with a tried and true franchise that so many people love that's legends this one. of zelda mm. legends of zelda it is a phenomenal franchise. There are very few. If, if we're talking about bad games in this franchise, I can't think of one, to be honest with you. Um, th this game, this franchise has sh it's just incredible. To be, I mean, I, I started playing as a child, and I people still line up to buy that game. Like I will still go play the newest one because it is such a good franchise. The story is perfect. Like The whole system is so good. It, it, overall, Legends of Zelda is so classic to everybody's memory you can't play zelda without without a problem you're right i can't play zelda i, can, I cannot <laughs> oh, i have zelda. so many things it's like watching to, golf on a complain. sunday afternoon i'm gonna be taking a nap in about five minutes i have so game. many things to complain about zelda because i really don't like those games but I know that they're so popular yeah. that me talking about them poorly is going <laughs> to impact the rest of my picks. So Please gonna, throw, his, throw, the throw the draft. Throw the draft. Talk about it. Throw the draft. Do it. Yeah, I, hands off on this one. That was the next thing I was going to say is I do think it was a good pick, though, because like my best friend has like three Legend of Zelda tattoos. It wasn't my cup of tea, but I do think it was in a high on my list of like classic games that I wasn't into but need to be considered. Um, yeah. So I do think that is a – Ocarina of Time? Oh, come on, man. Come on. It, whatever. You can, I, I can just play a flute in real life. I don't need to do it in a video game. But um, it's just not for me. I get it. I like that. And it's, it's kind of weird to me that I don't like it because it's like I like the strategy aspect. And, and Zelda does have that. I've gotten some entertainment it's out of them strategy, over the years. It's not strategy. It's puzzle memorization. Yeah, I guess that's true. It's more puzzles than it is strategy. There's no strategy. Yeah, it's not strategy. Here, No, I, I'm not doing it. I'm not going off on my, on my Zelda Breath of the Wild rant because people love that game. So I'll just say... Fine pick, A. Smith. Fine pick. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. A pick that people can't say bad about. Mm, feels good. I could, but I'm not going to. Right, go ahead. Could, go but ahead. won't because we're it, in a popularity bring it, bring contest. Bring it. <laughs> nope. Nope. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Blevins, your third pick in the draft. All right. So uh, because you guys are giving me smack about the 007, I want to talk about a game that is in, that is certainly a franchise, has been around for over a decade. I unfortunately i don't have a theme i i unfortunately don't have a theme song for this one but this is going to be the counter-strike franchise Ooh. look huh? you can't go when you talk about hardcore competitive old school hardcore competitive esports you've got starcraft brood war you've got maybe dota depending on when you're looking and you've got counter-strike some iteration of counter-strike all of them have been great from the original mod i mean think about games that are so good that they weren't even made by game designers. They were literally made by passionate fans as mods of other games and then became their own standalone game. How that, that's how, what more organic way to show how great a game is than having the community take such a passion to the game to make a mod and create a new game. And not only that. So to be clear, you're picking League of Legends? Not, not this round. Oh, not this round. I just, I just, not this round. I was, I was I'm picking Counter Strike here. I'm picking Counter Strike here. League of Legends also wasn't the first MOBA, uh, but you look at old Counter Strike. There, there are people who are playing Counter Strike tournaments. There's pictures of people playing old Counter Strike LAN tournaments, literally in basements. There are, 
And not only that, so you got that aspect of it, you've also got the literally today, some of the biggest esports tournaments out there, some of the biggest esports athletes out there, the biggest organizations and tournaments out there are around Counter Strike. It's a an esport in and unto itself. There is there are very few other esports that can even make an argument against Counter Strike in terms of massive impact um, and uh, just organic growth. So from that. I leave it Counter Strike, my pick. I think that would I mean, have been a great pick if we were picking the best esports of all time, but unfortunately, we're picking the fine. best video game franchises of all time. It's fine. And as though, despite Counter Strike being a very good game, I can't think of a more characterless, like just uh, so don't need deadpan, kind of boring. Like, there's what story you do? Greatest of all time. What do you I'm think greatest of all time like... means, Blevins? Like, holy smokes, do you eat vanilla ice cream or what do you? Uh, what do, he what do you does. eat? He probably does. Uh, he probably uh, eats listen, ice cream. listen. Nothing against yeah, Counter Strike. Question. If you if all you oh, want to do is just spray and pray, then yeah, Counter Strike is a great game. That's I think that's fine. Gonna, that, uh, you're not gonna be good at Counter Strike if you do that. You see, you're under you're good enough for a, you're good enough for a public lobby. And we're not talking about esports because I'm not the Blevins. I know what this draft is, um, but listen, a fine game, a great esport, greatest franchises of all time. Can't can't get there. No way. Cannot get there. Um, all right, so that brings the us around to me. Even, it's not even the best shooter. That brings us around to me. I've got my right, last I, two I, selections I, of this draft because we are going to stop it at four rounds. We've done more than enough yelling to not need oh, to go any deeper true. than that. Oh, oh, but I've got two picks. Ah, that's a shame. No um, 1.5 pick. Yeah, you've mm. got you've got one more selection in the draft. Um, my pick here, man. This this one is really tough, but I've got to say with three. Uh, with, I'm sorry, two first-person shooters off the board, nobody's taken the best one here as far as video game franchises go. Uh, this is a game that has not been in my world or on my radar in a while, though they did recently make a trip to it. I can't think of a game that's taught me more about history than, than this franchise in particular, literally more than any of my social studies teachers were able to drill into <laughs> my head. I'm going with Call of Duty here. Um yeah, but... Uh, or just a really great franchise that that had every aspect to it. It had solid competitive play, maybe not the best, maybe not my favorite format for, for competitive play, but there's plenty of people out there that really did enjoy it and loved it. I loved the campaign mode of this game. It was like how you fall into a really, really good book and you get lost and you just lose track of time and all of a sudden it's four o'clock in the morning and you're on a level and you're trying to win the stealth mission for like the sixth hour, stuff like that. Call of Duty to me was a, a big part of my childhood, just getting used to playing video games, kind of grinding through levels, things like that. Like my, my video game style was very different before call of duty. It, it opened up a lot of doors for me. Um, and I think it hits, it's been out around long enough. It hits all of our, the age demographics that I think are, are listening to this, um, to this draft in particular. So it's a little bit of a, a crowd pleaser pick, but um, I, I did not like the modern warfare era, the futuristic style of it. That's when I kind of left the game, but it maintained its popularity. Um, the gameplay was, was never really anything. It was more to me about me becoming a, a moving away from being a console gamer and uh, doing what Ace Smith's not been able to do and become a PC gamer uh, rip that might happen someday. But anyways, yeah, I'm going to go with Call of Duty here. And then we've got the final round. I've got the first pick of that one. Um, I'm going to go into my own personal realm here and go with a game that I've spent probably more hours on than anything that's not my first round pick of Warcraft. Um, I've got to take mine. I'm uh, if I have this music, I'm going to be so mad. There's just about zero percent chance I'm okay. taking yours because I want Madden here. Um, oh, I think all right, all right. I think Madden touches a section of the video game universe that very Good. few other games have have really been able to do. Um, its own really deep and and um, very. Well, I'm trying to think of the word like 
passionate esports scene around Madden uh, gets a lot of love and, and it connects gamers with this, the sports world, which I think is, there's other games that do it, but outside of FIFA and, and really here in, in the U S where we grew up, well, all three of us grew up, uh, Madden had a much bigger footprint on me personally. And I think on a lot of, uh, of at least Americans, our audience definitely skews American. Um, and I, I didn't really care for FIFA. So I'm not taking that nonsense. Sorry, I carry him. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not sorry at all. Uh, I'm going to take Madden here because the uh, the sports world needs to be represented in this draft. Otherwise, I don't think we would be doing a good job of, of presenting a list of the best franchises ever. Hmm. Any counterpicks? I mean, that was that was, I, that was one of my picks. So I don't well I don't done. have any counterpick to that except for the fact that you didn't even pick any of the best sports games. I, man, I don't even want. You know, I'll, I'll, I'm not, I'm not gonna pick them. And if A. Smith wants to pick them, I mean, you didn't pick NFL Blitz better than Madden, MLB Slugfest better than Madden, freezing NBA cold takes incoming, Jam. NBA Jam, my NBA Jam be better than Madden. Madden. My... Ken okay. Griffey Slugfest was not better than it. No, no, no it wasn't. Well, and, and NBA Jam, I will give its credit, but we're talking about franchises. Yeah. Here. It... We're NBA Jam was not a franchise. No, it was not. One, it was, it was one a game wonder. It's fine. And the Midway but, Arcade. Keep trying to tell yourself that so you don't feel so bad about your first round pick, Blevins, but it's just yeah. not going to be true. It's like, like I'm going like, to make up for it here. I mean, to be fair, like, like oh, gosh. I, I love sports games. I'm a huge sports game person. I still play sports games. Um, so Madden was definitely up there for one of my picks. You so also I, it was, still it was up there. didn't even pick the best football game. <laughs> which would be fifa obviously yeah, I'm not FIFA. FIFA. there was more than one football game on to, my list but i'm not to getting to that one uh, uh, nfl uh, football oh uh, yeah yeah okay tech mobile and, and i and i Better was i would uh, fifa man <laughs> don't even get me started on FIFA. i play fifa and i'm pretty sure every time i play fifa i hate myself more and more <laughs> like it, it that game is the worst game but it is well, so addictive. We had no intention of getting you started on FIFA because I picked Madden oh. and Blevins. You're up today <laughs> with your yep, final pick of the draft. All right. Well, in terms of greatest franchises of all time, how can we not? Splatoon. Oh, man, I have to. Man, I. Uh, Splatoon. I have so many I want to pick here. Mm, I say we go to round six. It's what? not Splatoon. What? It's. You know what? I just, oh god, I gotta do it. Hold on, let me get. I had the theme, then I changed it, and then I go, I gotta go back. But this game, oh, man, I'm loading up. No, you know what? I'm going with this one. How can we talk about the greatest video game franchises of all time without talking about the number one game of all time? Probably what people have put more hours into than any other game out there. League of Legends. How I can you not? Uh, oh, how pander. can you not talk about it? What's third place League feel like, Blevins? Like in the moment, in the moment, it, while it you're doing it, what does third place nope, feel like? Nope, That's what nope, I want to nope. know. The wow. polls will play it out. They the will. will play they it out. will. Everyone has at one point or another played League of Legends. You've loved it. You've hated it. Regardless, yeah, I needed you needed a shower afterwards. Something mm. about it. When I when that game first came out, and I was playing, my friends and I in college would be playing nonstop. We would just text each other, LOL, and we'd get on. We would play for hours and hours and hours and play and play and play and grind and grind and grind to the uh, to the bewilderment of all of our college professors because we would go back to class and never having slept. The game has done something that very few others have. It's taken uh, a game that started out as basically a clone of another game, that being Dota, and making it into something great. The lore behind League of Legends has has grown precipitously since it came out. The esports around League of Legends has grown. People, you know, they're having weird dance concerts for League of Legends with League of Legends characters singing the song. It's crazy. League of Legends is a worldwide phenomena. It has pushed gaming into the mainstream in ways that others haven't we had a simpsons episode about league of legends not three not i think that was about ago. dota 2 no it was about league of legends they yeah. with Riot games oh yeah. lord bet you right now that they was, worked with Riot I, I, games. I mean yeah. I, I know you're accurate but i just want to argue because anyway. <laughs> oh, just, like, right just like because just like mortal kombat Riot. just like mortal kombat this game was never the best in its genre, right? Like, it was always strictly worse than the, the, the custom game mode in yeah. Warcraft 3. And it was always yeah. worse than Dota 2, though admittedly more popular. 
I don't know. Do you want to mention Fortnite a couple more times, Blevins, just please, to make sure please. you lose this draft? You might be able to get to fourth place. Throw it. Should we let him pick a fifth round pick, just him, just because he, it's only going to get worse? So can, just so we can throw harder? Maybe. I'll do it. I have another one lined up. I even have a song for it. Oh, well, have, we don't. Have... nobody wants to hear the song. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> let's just all go yikes at that pick and move on to Ace Smith. With the, the last pick. pick of the draft, Ace Smith, round us out. All right. Last pick of the draft. I've got several, man. There are several that I think are in this round. But I would be remiss without playing this song. Without playing the game, the song. Here it is. Does anybody know what this is? Anybody? Mm. Anybody? Can't really hear oh. it. Oh, you it's there? That's what I had. That's what I had. It is. It is Halo, my friends. Halo was the original. Just it was it was so good that so many people played it. All right, I'm killing the song. Oh my mute. You came through here. terribly. So good call. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was like, all right, all right, all right. but, but uh, okay, Halo was the party game. Like everybody loved to play Halo. Um, I mean, I I can't tell you how many of my friends spent Halo One, Halo Two. I've played Halo Three. The Forge mode in Halo 3 alone was incredible. You know how many maps you could make in that? That was like one of the, oh, the maps. You could you could build anything. Maybe it was Halo 2. I don't remember, man. They, they were all so good. That, and they their maps, the maps were perfectly done. The the New Age feel of it, I mean, oh, everything about it. The, the BR was just perfect. I'm pretty sure that was one of the original BRs, um, the three-tap feel of one of the game game I, it was so perfect there everything about halo worked and it worked flawlessly now i don't know where we've gone from halo 3 um halo, there was like halo wars maybe and and halo don't worry wars? it's probably still really good games i mean you yeah, know halo wars revolutionizing the rts genre great game halo wars rip you guys Look, don't see my face but i'm giving a big yikes there's always stinkers, but Halo 1, Halo 2, and Halo 3 were all incredible games. The story mode was so good. Master Chief is one of the most legendary characters known. I mean, Master Chief, perfect. You put a Halo helmet on, everybody knows what you're talking about. That that shaped the generation, the, the 2000s generation. Halo was a mainstay, and everybody who was alive at that point, which is going to be most of our audience will know exactly what Halo is. It's a phenomenal game. Sniper, shotgun, that was, come on, some OG level stuff right there. If if uh, Call of Duty wasn't on this list, I would say that was the worst shooter you could have picked, but we already had it on there with Call of Duty, so not, not the actual worst pick. Uh, Let, let's be real. I You had two, you had, I snapped, picked two of yours. So you know what? True, it's true, it's So true. what are you going to complain flip. about? I got to flip play. real quick. I got to flip real quick. <laughs> the best thing about Halo was the red versus blue series. And that doesn't count because that's not part of the video game. I'm franchise. pretty sure it is a part of the, it, it, I mean, it was made by students that it. went to my school. It was, this was a college project really? by was RIT students. From RIT? Yeah, our, those are oh, RIT. That. that was an RIT student project, to the best of my oh, knowledge, um, that. that popped off and went went viral uh, or whatever it, it, you could do in the days when the internet was still new. I don't think viral was a term back then. But nonetheless, um, that's popular. where it got its its popularity. And yeah, I'm fairly certain those were RIT guys and that started as a school project. And it, it uh, 100% fact. goes in it because the only way they do it is playing the game like that you can't not so it, it it was free advertising for halo that's fine but like i'm not trying to claim the commercials for madden i'm not trying I to mean, claim the impact of the madden curse on the nfl uh though that would probably <laughs> be mean, a pretty significant fair, argument like, um <laughs> like there's so many things here i mean golly halo i mean here's the thing lucky People for blevins for whatever reason they want the detective sure. pikachu isn't going to factor into Pokemon, or shouldn't factor. You're right. You're right about people can Detective vote however they want. It's going to be a great movie. I don't know what you're talking about. Get out of here with this I'm crap. I'm sorry. I've seen the trailer, so I'm going to have to disagree with you on that one. I've seen Pikachu um, himself. He frightens little children. That's you're not great. Right. That's like the, the first scene of the movie, I think. Um, but... <laughs> 
Um, all right. So, guys, that wraps up the gaming or the video game franchise draft greatest of all time. Um, find us on Twitter. That's H- at HNP underscore foul play. We're going to put up, and it will be on the pinned tweet, a poll. Uh, we'll put it up tomorrow so that way we don't spoil it for too, too many people. Um, if you're listening on the, the podcast feed, it's it's probably up unless you're, you're very early in the morning on what is that Tuesday? Um, so guys, uh, outside of the draft, any parting words, uh, we'll, we could go back into another hour of, of, you know, talking smack on each other's picks, but any parting words, uh, Blevins, where can people find you online? Uh, they can find me on Twitter at, uh, vote for my Twitter. Mine was the best picks. Not close. Don't even vote for the other ones. Uh, Yikes. at <laughs> underscore Blevins. Uh, it, it's an obvious, mine was the obvious best one. Sorry. Close. Uh, yeah, obvious to your mom, maybe. Third place. <laughs> I'm pretty sure your girlfriend would you pick mine. That's all I'm going to say. The two spot, Blevins. I love you, but. Mario Party is a trash game, and anyone who votes for that is a trash person. <laughs> Uh, you know what? That's fine. You can you can you can trash half the half the population. That's totally fine. <laughs> trash everybody you want. I'm still gonna win. Mm. Mm, it's true. All right. Uh, you want to find me? I don't, find but me? might people might. So tell us where they can. So <laughs> all right, <laughs> all right. Uh, you can find me at a smith underscore o w. Also, you can find me at Crash Bandicoot. Would have been my fifth pick. Just so everybody wanted to know not getting better for you anyways all right uh, so i also would have picked fortnite and apex legends and uh <laughs> <laughs> i would have picked whatever you guys would have made you guys vote Auto, for me and Grand Theft Auto role play specifically and Grand also Auto guitar role hero play. I would have picked guitar, guitar hero would have had was guitar actually hero. super high, high on my list no Fighter joke. Is also on my list elder scrolls uh, we're going to pac-man Play fighter is on my list <laughs> no pac-man was on my list this all right guys i said nothing about the draft gentlemen we got this gentlemen Gentlemen, <laughs> if we want to do these again, we have to prove that we can keep it from dissolving into a how screaming can, fest. How can, how can you make, Unless how the can feedback you comes back, that that's exactly what people want to hear. In which case, we can yell into our microphones so that you don't understand anything. That's fine with us. All right, guys. So we're going to sign off here again. Follow at uh, High Noon Podcast at HNP underscore foul play on Twitter. Vote in the, the poll to let us know who... You guys think we're already getting feedback in chat that Blevins definitely threw with the second pick. So thank oh, you so much, you. Bear Hands. We love you, Bear Hands. Um, but that's going to that's gonna wrap up the show, guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you all next week as we preview stage two. Also, Tony Hawk. That was on my list. Shut up. <laughs> Got his boots and he put on his hat. Threw the coin away that same day. It's in his past and he's not looking back He says, finding mine, now God's my way He's not good, but he sure ain't bad He'll make amends for the sins that he has He says, I'll change